Do you feel tired and moody all the time? Have basic tasks become borderline impossible? Are you forgetting things or making bad decisions? If that sounds like you, well, you might be sleep deprived. But don't worry, there's plenty you can do to help. About one third of US adults don't get enough sleep. Guys, that's one in three people. That means it's pretty much guaranteed that someone you know is sleep deprived right now. And if you clicked on this video, it's probably even you. Most have no idea they're sleep deprived. They just assume it's part of having a job, raising kids, and living life. But sleep deprivation can have significant health effects like weight gain, reduced immune function, and impaired mental ability. Daytime tiredness can also hurt other people. There are about 100,000 police reported drowsy driving accidents each year. Let's unpack everything you need to know about sleep deprivation, including what causes it and how you can prevent it. Adults need between seven and nine hours of sleep. Children and teenagers need between eight and 10. You're considered sleep deprived when you miss those marks, but not getting enough sleep is a pretty broad definition. Feeling well rested isn't only about how many hours you sleep. For example, you could get eight hours, but you could also wake up several times throughout the night. That's why sleep medicine uses terms like sleep deficiency or insufficiency to pinpoint specific factors. There's also a big difference between sleep deprivation and insomnia. With insomnia, people have every opportunity to sleep. They just can't. With sleep deprivation, people aren't allocating enough time to sleep due to other responsibilities. Think of it this way. People who are sleep deprived because of a busy work week can easily catch up on the weekends. Insomnia doesn't care that it's Saturday. Sleep deprivation breaks down into three types. Acute sleep deprivation is when you can go a few days without enough sleep. Chronic sleep deprivation is when that bad sleep persists beyond three months. Then there's chronic sleep deficiency or insufficient sleep when disruptions and fragmented sleep keep you from getting a full and restful night's sleep. This might be a hard pill to swallow, but sleep deprivation, well, it might be your fault. While sleep disorders and other medical conditions can play a role, most sleep deprived people are making bad bedtime choices. For example, did you really need to watch another episode of The Last of Us at 11 o'clock? Did you really need that cappuccino after dinner? Was it a good idea to save all your studying for the night before? These decisions come easy when you're not going to bed at the same time every night. Nobody thinks about how it might affect their sleep until it's too late. Work obligations are where things get muddy. Working long hours or multiple jobs might not be up to you. Shift workers have it especially hard. They're working through the night while everyone else gets to sleep. But let's say you make all the right choices and work regular hours. If you're still sleep deprived, it may be time to speak with your doctor. Sleep apnea, anxiety, and chronic pain are just a few conditions that might be affecting your sleep. Sleep deprivation affects your entire body. So let's go from the top down talking about the multiple daytime effects of a bad night's sleep. Up top, sleep deprivation will affect your memory, mood, and ability to concentrate. The brain uses sleep to restore new information in short and long-term memory. Not getting enough sleep makes this harder. You know how you're not supposed to remove a hard drive when saving data? It's sort of like that. Sleep deprivation will make you feel moody, emotional, and short-tempered. You'll have trouble solving problems and performing basic tasks like driving and making meals. Your creative and critical thinking skills will also fly out the window. Think of it like suffering a stat debuff in a video game. In your upper body, sleep deprivation can increase your risk of high blood pressure and heart disease. The chemicals in your stomach that scream, I'm full, fall out of sync. You'll start eating at irregular hours and overindulging when you've had enough. Both put you on the fast track to weight gain. Chronic sleep deprivation has been linked to an increased risk of type 2 diabetes. That's because it affects your body's release of insulin, a hormone that lowers blood sugar. Finally, your immune system becomes less efficient at fighting viruses and bacteria when you don't get enough sleep. You're more likely to get sick and stay sick when sleep deprived. Sleep deprivation can lower your sex drive, especially in men. A study from UChicago Medicine found that sleep deprivation can significantly lower testosterone levels. You'll also have a hard time balancing and staying coordinated. You might stumble more often, leading to accidents at home or work. While you'd assume catching up on sleep will solve the problem, it's not that easy. If you haven't been sleeping well, you've probably accumulated what's called sleep debt. It's like regular debt, except the only interest is the toll on your mental and physical health. Let's say you need eight hours of sleep, but you only get six. Congratulations, you've just racked up two hours worth of sleep debt. Wait, no, that's not a good thing. Some people think a quick nap or sleeping in on the weekends will repay their sleep debt, but it doesn't work that quickly. Studies found that it can take 
four days to recover from one hour of lost sleep. It might even take nine days to dig yourself out of sleep debt entirely. And remember, that's only getting you back to baseline. Getting out of sleep debt will reduce the risks of sleep deprivation, like weight gain and high blood pressure, but it's up to you to maintain healthy sleep habits. If you're sitting there thinking, yup, I'm sleep deprived, then we've got good news. It's very treatable and you can start making changes tonight. The most important thing you can do is address sleep deprivation head on. Too many people cope with it. They think it's just a part of life, a necessary sacrifice. It's not. First, find time to meet with your doctor. Let them know what's going on and see if they can give any advice. In most cases, adopting healthy sleep hygiene habits is the best medicine. Afternoon coffee might get you through the day, but it won't lower your blood pressure. Start by making sleep a priority. Set a consistent sleep schedule to get your body clock back on track. Go to bed and wake up at the same time every day, even on the weekends. That might mean setting new boundaries in your work and social life. Staying up late with your friends isn't worth accumulating more sleep debt. Find a relaxing bedtime routine to pair with your new sleep schedule. Avoid sugar, caffeine, and alcohol late at night. Oh, and put your devices away about an hour before bed. Blue light from our devices messes with our natural melatonin production. It basically tricks your brain into staying awake. You can even help yourself out during the day. Expose yourself to as much sunlight as possible. It helps your body clock know when it's time to be active and when it's time for bed. Regular exercise does wonders for your overall health. It also helps maintain your sleep schedule. Just don't hit the gym too close to bedtime. Sleep deprivation doesn't have to control you. In fact, there's plenty you can do to control it. And if you want to learn more about sleep debt as well as ways you can get out of it, we have a video all about that right here. Talk to your doctor about establishing better bedtime routines, set boundaries at work, and don't be afraid to choose a sleep over a night out with friends. Your body and mind will thank you for it. Thanks for watching everyone, sleep well.